morning everybody thanks for watching um, I'm gonna do a few videos on Paul's letter to Titus um, starting today I, I'm gonna jump back to Romans too because I wanted to do something here um, maybe in my next video but today um, in the first four verses of Paul's letter to Titus it is proven beyond any doubt that a word that most Bibles use quite often the way that they translate it is absolutely 100% incorrect and society as a whole has adopted this mistranslation to apply meaning to various scripture that give an inaccurate picture of God's plan. That's just the simplest way I can state it. Understanding what words mean is very important to understanding scripture and Paul's first four verses to Titus here prove that the word in question is Aeonian the Greek word Aeonian and it has a Hebrew equivalent which is Olam but Aeonian means age long or a period of time now the way it's translated in most Bibles is eternal and that is the mistranslation it cannot be eternal it's not that it's an honest mistake or it can be interchangeable and it's partly wrong it's right in this situation but it's wrong in this situation that's not what it is Titus 1 3 proves that the use of the word eternal is flat out impossible and it is flat out wrong and it should not be used something cannot pertain to a period of time and to eternity at the same time you can't use the same word to describe both it's like saying one thing is the cat is all white and it's all black you know it can be white and black but it can't be all white and all black well eternity cannot mean age long it can't be used interchangeably Eternity has no beginning and no end. It has no concept of time. Time is absent. That's what makes it eternity. Age long or Aeonian has to do with time. It has to do with an age, a period of time. So it cannot mean eternal, which has nothing to do with time time and eternity do not go together eternity is the absence of time age long is the very presence of time and not understanding this can allow people to mistranslate words and come up with a concept that's nowhere in scripture like eternal hell or eternal separation from God or to believe that Jesus won't accomplish his mission in saving every man woman and child that has ever walked the face of this earth that God won't be all in all eventually it gives birth to all these lies and they justify it because they use a word that means age long and translate it to mean eternal it's one of the greatest errors mistakes lies in all of scripture and it's impossible to understand scripture if you don't understand 
the words that are used. That's just the bottom line. So I, I'm just going to read these first four verses. And even if you want to argue, and many Christians do, about, oh, you don't know what words mean, all this stuff. What are you, a Greek expert? No, of course not. You can look words up and do this. But in this instance, you can define what a word means and prove that this word does not mean eternal just by the words in Scripture, the way it's used, you can prove it. And this is so important because if you're separate from God for a period of time, which the Bible teaches, Scripture teaches, and you translate that period of time to mean eternity, then you miss God's entire plan. And you have no idea what's going on. So it is vitally important. Paul says, a slave of God, this is Titus verse 1, yet an apostle of Jesus Christ, in accord with the faith of God's chosen and a realization of the truth which accords with devoutness in expectation of life aeonian, which God, who does not lie, promises before times aeonian. Now this is the concordant version. This is the proper translation. Most Bibles will translate this verse, verse 3 of Titus, to say, who does not lie promises before times eternal or before eternity began. Now how can these promises be or occur before eternity? Eternity has no beginning. So how can something happen before eternity? Right there, the word cannot be translated that way. It cannot mean eternal because translating it eternal makes the verse make absolutely no sense because eternity has no beginning and no end. It has no concept of time. Yet, when you translate this word aeonian to mean eternal in Titus 1.3, it pertains to time because it happened before eternity. Not to mention that, it happens before eternity, which doesn't even have a beginning. So how can it happen before? It? The translation of the word aeonian to mean eternal here cannot mean eternal. Yet manifests his word in its own eras by heralding, with which I was entrusted according to the injunction of God, our Savior to Titus, a genuine child, according to the common faith. So the proper translation here, who does not lie, promises before times aeonian, yet manifests his word in his own eras by heralding. So that makes sense, times aeonian. Because that's a period of time. So something could happen before that. And that's exactly what is being said here. It's not eternity. It's a period of time. It's aeon, aeonian. And Strong's word here is number 166, which is you. See, God is eternal. He's the only being that is eternal. Because he's the only being that didn't have a beginning. He didn't have a beginning and of course he doesn't have an end. And we as humans in our human mind cannot understand something that does not have a beginning. Everything we know, every person, every being, every entity, every animal, every object, every thought, we can trace back to a beginning somehow. And that is our whole concept of understanding what it is that it had a beginning. So we in our finite minds cannot understand the eternal. Wrap your mind around God never having a beginning. We can't fathom that. Not having a beginning? How does that work? We don't understand it.
a God is the only being that is eternal. He has no beginning. He has no end. Everything besides God had a beginning. So, God, being eternal, created through his Son, Jesus Christ, time. He created the ages, as I believe it's Hebrews 1, 3 that says through Jesus Christ, the ages were created. So these ages, or these Aeonian times, which is the word used here in Titus 1, 3, obviously pertains to time. So the eternal God created time, the five ages, and within that time he operates, everything he operates, until the consummation, which his end game is through his son, and through his faith, his death, his entombment, and resurrection, he brings every man, woman, and child, all of creation, to be filled with all that God is based on the work of the Son, Jesus Christ. That's the end. And everything within that is the period of time that God operates. We all eventually put on immortality and will live forever. But we still had a beginning. So we're not eternal in the sense that God is eternal. We will live forever. We will put on immortality. Some will put on at first, because they were given belief, others will have to go through judgment and then put on that immortality that was already completed by Christ Jesus. So we all get there, but we all go through time and come in each in our own order. But when you translate those periods of time to mean eternal, then you miss the entire end game and you miss the entire plan of God using those periods of time to get to his end game of saving all mankind, as 1 Timothy 4.10 says. So the translation of the word eternal here is very deceptive. So that Strong's word, 166. It cannot mean eternal in the context of Titus 1 3. But now we go back to other scripture verses, and I'm just going to go through a few of them here that take that word and translate it to mean eternal. It's all over the place. But it's just proven in Titus 1 3 that it can't mean eternal. Because something cannot happen before eternity begins, it cannot happen before God. And Titus 1 3 says that God does not lie, and these promises were made before eternity began if you take that translation and it doesn't make any sense so it can't be eternal there the proper word is aeonian and that means before time began before God created time he made these promises so elsewhere when we look in scripture we know that that word aeonian cannot mean eternal because you can't interchange it with a period of time so here it cannot mean eternal, it means a period of time. So everywhere else we see it, it has to pertain to a period of time. It could pertain to different lengths of time, but it cannot pertain to eternity because that's the complete opposite of that word. So if we look at John 3.16, one of the most popular verses that religious people like to, to quote. For thus God loves the world so that he gives his only begotten son, that everyone who is believing in him should not perish, but may have eternal life. So again, eternal is used there in most Bible translation, the correct word. It's again, Strong's word 166, the same word used in Titus 1.3. That word should be, but they should be having life aeonian, or life for the ages, aeonian life. So they were put on immortality first. And then at the consummation, at the end of the ages, they just continue on. So no one, that doesn't mean that they'll die. They just put on immortality and they move on after the ages are done and continue in immortality. But it's not eternal life because 
they've had a beginning. And we already know that that word based on Titus 1.3 cannot mean eternal. It means age long. A great example of this and another commonly quoted scripture um, by Christians is Matthew 25.46. Which again, in most translations it says that these shall go away into eternal punishment yet the just into eternal life or something like that. I, I don't have the scriptures up here. Um, I'm not going to pull them up right now. But they use the word eternal there. So if you do this, you have eternal destruction or eternal death. And if you're just and you do this, you have eternal life. But again, that's the same word there. Strong's word 166 Aeonian, which means period of time, pertaining to time, age long. And again, we know it can't mean eternal. So what this verse actually says, as it's properly translated, it says, and these shall be going away in the chastening Aeonian, or Aeonian chastening, yet the just in the life Aeonian, or Aeonian life. So we have, on the one hand, those who are not being punished for eternity, but go into age-long chastening. And chastening means that you are being corrected. Remember Isaiah 26, 9 says that those who are being judged will learn righteousness. You're not judged for all eternity. You're judged for a period of time. You're thrown into the lake of fire for a period of time if that's your destiny you're dead for the thousand years which is a period of time it's not eternal it's age long so if you go into this chastising and think of it every time God chastens or punishes and in, in our thinking it's always done or judging is a better word. It's always done for the good of the one being judged. It's never vindictive. It's never the end. It's only a means to the end. And that, again, is misunderstood when you don't understand what the word eternal and aeonian mean. So this verse that's used to teach eternal hell, that's used to teach eternal separation from God, actually proves the opposite. And these shall be coming away into chastening Aeonian, which means they will be corrected for a period of time. And then they will come in to the promises of God through the Son, Jesus Christ. Yet the just and the life Aeonian, so they get that life for the ages. They put on that immortality while the others go through judgment and put on death. But in the end, we all have that immortality because it's age long. It's not eternal. What happens after that age? Well, everyone comes and is filled with all that God is. We all die in Adam. We all live forever in Christ. That's what scripture teaches. Revelation 11.15 says that and this actually uses the Greek word aeon which is number 165 and strong so it's the we're talking about the noun and adjective form so I know examples were given of this before but it's the same word you know, if I say, I'm going to come and visit you every hour, or if I say, I'm going to visit you hourly, it's the same word. The adjective form of the noun cannot mean the opposite of each other. So when we use word 165, like is used in Revelation 11:15 here, even though it's word 165, it has the same meaning. So looking at Revelations 11.15 
And the seventh messenger trumpets, and loud voices occurred in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world became our Lord's and his Christ's, and he shall be reigning forever and ever, or for the eternities of the eternities. That is way, the way Bibles translate it when they translate it improperly. Now how can Jesus rule forever and ever? That's two forevers. How can he rule for the eternities of the eternities? Eternities have no end, no beginning and no end. So what do you need two of them for? It makes no sense there. Not to mention that in 1 Corinthians 15, 25, we know that Jesus doesn't rule for all eternity anyway because he reigns up until a certain point, up until the last enemy is destroyed, death. So if Jesus reigns until something, it means, that very word means that it comes to an end. His reign, his rule comes to an end. So he doesn't rule for even one eternity, let alone two eternities, which doesn't make any sense. So the proper translation here, again, in Revelations 11.15, is that he shall be reigning for the eons of the eons. So the next two ages, we're in the third age right now, as Paul says, the third wicked age. The next two ages, the thousand year kingdom and the new heavens and the new earth. Jesus rules during that time because there's still beings that need to be subjected to Jesus because they're not filled with God's righteousness yet. Why does Jesus Christ give up his reign in 1 Corinthians 15, 25? Because he so perfects all of creation and fills them with all that God is. They now have God right, God's righteousness that there's no reason to rule anymore. Why does he need to rule and reign when all of creation is perfect and filled with all that God is? That's his goal, his mission, his end game, and that's what he accomplishes. And when that happens, he no longer rules because... Everybody's filled with all that God is. There's no need to rule over them anymore. He is a perfect savior and completes the mission that God gave him to save every entity, every man, woman, and child has ever walked the face of the earth based only on his faith, his death for our sin, his entombment, and his resurrection. Not based on anything humanity has done. The ages of time is just a personal experience that God puts us through to enhance our joy and his glory forever. And it's missed if we interchange the words age long and eternity. Look to Revelation 20 and 22 talks chapter 20 to 22 talks a little bit about the thousand year kingdom and the new heavens and new earth it says after the thousand years the dead will live again and they'll be judged some will go into the lake of fire some go into new heavens and the new earth it describes the fact that there'll be no more misery the former things will pass away. This is after, in verse 21, he perceived, John perceived a, a new heaven and a new earth coming down. For the former heaven and the former earth pass away, and the sea is no more. And that's verse um, 1 of chapter 21. Goes on to say that, you know, people will eat from the leaves of the log for the cure of the nations. So there's a lot going on. I'm not getting into all this. I'm already at 24 minutes. Good God. But there, the next two ages, the thousand year kingdom and the new heavens and the new earth, that's the time that Jesus reigns. And yes, not everyone will be in those ages. There will be people who will be dead as it says, after the thousand years, those that are dead will be risen and they will be judged. Some will go into the second death. But regardless, 
that period of time is age long meaning exactly that that it's a period of time people want to translate the word aeonian which means period of time to mean eternal therefore if they're out of one of the next two ages the thousand year kingdom or the new heavens and the new earth they apply that to mean eternity and therefore missing God's plan that after those ages at the consummation those people will be vivified made immortal filled up with all that God is just like those who were filled up and had that life during those two glorious ages so understanding that the word Aeonian in Titus 1 3 and elsewhere in Scripture cannot mean eternal and that eternal cannot be used for that word anywhere in Scripture because the word is proven in Scripture and outside of Scripture to mean age long then you have to apply that everywhere and if you don't you get a misunderstanding of Scripture if you don't you shorten the game you don't play it's like playing a basketball game where you, you don't you don't play the fourth quarter the third quarter just goes on forever or a, a baseball game where the seventh inning goes on forever you never play the eighth and ninth inning because you misinterpret something to mean eternal when it comes to an end if you say something's eternal and it never comes to an end but in truth whatever you say is eternal actually does come to an end then something has to come after it and that's why people don't understand what comes after the ages they don't understand that God will save every man woman and child because that's what scripture says happens after for all humanity after the ages because they apply that age where those people are separate they apply that to mean eternity and you can't understand God's plan if you don't understand those words God has a plan he is eternal he alone is eternal he has no beginning and no end Titus 1 3 says that he made these promises in an improperly translated scripture before eternity began it can't mean that he can only make these promises before time began because you can't do anything before eternity because it had no beginning so this pertains to time God's plan pertains to time and everything through these five ages God operates according to his plan his sovereignty some get in early some come in later but it's all part of God's plan to save and fill every creature ever created with all that he is because of the faith of Jesus Christ his death his entombment and his resurrection that's the glorious end game